There now. Good morning, coffee moaners. That and, was uh, so funny. We had like the weirdest gremlins going on there. Excuse me. But nice to see you now, to see you nice. Good coffee moaning. Good moaning, good moaning, good moaning. Um, hope you're all well. Um, oh my goodness, actually, before we go on any further, Dina, Mark and I did a reaction to the first Christmas supermarket um, ad, didn't we? And the John Lewis one is out now. Are we going to record that as well? And we couldn't believe how many of you are loving them. Well... It was funny, though. Well, no, 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 I don't think they were loving the ad. They were loving Vlogmas starting. Yeah. So if you don't know what Vlogmas is, we've been doing Vlogmas for years now, every day of December, right up until Christmas Day, starting on the 1st of December, we do our Vlogmas, which is like a family reality show Christmas extravaganza. It takes us away from the world and takes you away from the world. So it's all sorts of things like, what sort of things do we do? It's, it's decorating Christmas the shopping, house. Christmas lights. Christmas, Christmas crazy Christmas, Christmas Getting things. the Christmas decorations out. And, and all of our massive failures. Don't worry. We don't have the sort of Christmas where you're left feeling hollow going, oh, why haven't I got... Da -da -da. I'm, I'm because it's always a mess up. A number of die-hard Vlogmas fans are already concerned because I've let them into the idea that you and Dina are seeking to take control in a slightly controlling fashion. Yes, but you're going to be excited because it's new and exciting Guys, things. Guys, don't worry. I'm not going to let them take complete control. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But, but do check out that video because actually Dina and I were a bit pissed. So it went... But I haven't seen it, but I know we were laughing a lot when we were filming it. I zoomed in on you for when you nearly choked. Really close. I don't remember that. I've never seen you look like that. But anyway, um, we are going to do the John Lewis reaction after Coffee Morning. We'll be putting that up, that up as well. If you want a little bit of escapism, it's not about selling stuff. It's not like, oh, God, like, you know, and suddenly everything comes out in the shops. It's Christmas. Really, it's just about getting cosy and warm and silly. Absolutely. Earlier on. And the wonderful thing about Vlogmas, it's a time for nostalgia. Me and Nanny Di went down Christmases of old and Nadia and Dina went down the Christmases of their childhood. We do all sorts of things. We'll, we'll be going to events. We'll be showing you parts of London you've never seen. We'll be going into places that for very, very obvious reasons, some people can either not afford, geographically can't get to, or through disability and, and, and health can't Harry actually Jones, ever so dream of being able to get to. counting down the days to Vlogmas. We're making gingerbread houses decorating the house which is always carnage carnage and, and we've one, got some and one of the think developments there and one of the really nice things i love seeing and i see it come through quite a lot and in fact it comes up a lot when we do our lives just about knocking about town is for so many of you for whatever reason circumstance whatever you can't see or get to certain places or things we try to give you a realistic and non sort of promotional Realistic Not experience that smug of like, here I am with oh. my Instagram perfect Christmas. What are you missing out on? Yeah, just like that. So we, we try to avoid exactly that. So, so there we go. Anyway, I've seen a few comments about the John Lewis advert. Already people are, are split. Don't tell me anything. Don't tell me anything. I can't see anything. Oh, don't give me any spoilers. All I want to ask is, why is the theme this year... No, don't. You're going to spoil something. I don't want to know anything. I know nothing about it. I just want to see it and react. I think, I think made, we've got to have a little rule clear. where I always have a glass of port or a glass of Baileys when what? I watch an advert. Well, is the yard arm over the yard arm? Is the sun over the... What is that? Is it the what over the Everyone's what? asking how cold is the house. You do look like you're just going to go off somewhere. I am about to go off somewhere. That's why we need to move on. So, right. OK, guys, how are we all? How is everyone? Now, obviously, <laughs> however much one tries to dodge the news in the true, unfiltered, unfettered reality of it all, one can't. Because why? Cruella de Vil, Cruella de Vil. If nobody likes you, she definitely will. <laughs> and that's true. So, uh, Suella, I mean, come on. I think we can, we've can. we got two choices here. You can either get really angry and really annoyed and frustrated and then blow a gasket and your blood pressure goes through the roof. And in fact, you end up being collateral damage. Or you look at it all and you plaster a sort of big red nose on her face and go... Should we do a bit of both? <laughs> Should we do a bit of both? Um, so what is this? This is this is the news that obviously there's been this huge... I don't know what you think of this, but, you know, there's been a huge... Uh, and look, there are many different aspects to this that we I hear, you know, uh, which seem contradictory but aren't. The vast majority of the British public feel that the Palestinian marches shouldn't be happening on Armistice Day. How one can 
fully, you know, sort of digest that information in terms of, well, that's based upon what they know, and what do they know is based on the mainstream press and what the government is saying. So obviously, I get it. You know, we get it. There's a lot of people who wishes wish it weren't wish the marches weren't or the march wasn't happening on on Armistice Day. That said, the police the police clearly stated that they felt there was no reason to pull the Palestinian march off. There were no I'm risks. Just asking who is Suella? Suella Bravman is our Home Secretary. She's you know, in terms of within the sort of safety and sanctity of this country, it's, alongside the Chancellor, it's the next most important post in government. She's She's there to keep all of us, all of us, safe. That's her, that's her portfolio's brief. Keep us safe. Remember that. So the police, Metropolitan Police, they did go to the, the organisers of the Palestinian marches and asked, could you possibly uh, change to another day? Palestinian people, the march organisers said, no, it's a peaceful protest. There's no plans for any violence or anything. It's peaceful. It's at a different time to the armistice celebrations. It's at a different time, different location, etc., etc. Metropolitan Police said, OK, there's absolutely no cause for concern and there's absolutely no intelligence yet of any potential reason to stop the march. Protocol is that if... Based on the fact as well that the previous marches, they, they'd actually quoted as saying very low level of arrest. There's always going to be idiots in any large yeah, group of yeah. people, but very low level of arrest yeah. and peaceful. So that was also what was informing yeah. the, their, their decision. And then in quite what I thought was quite unprecedented moves yesterday, both Rishi Sunak and Suella Bravman put an enormous amount of pressure on Mark Rowley, the, uh, the, the head of the commissioner of, of the Metropolitan Police, to do whatever he could essentially to cancel, postpone or stop the march. And Mark Rowley, you know, is it Mark Rowley? It is Mark Rowley. Rowley. Um, Rowley, Rowley. Um, he, he said, I can't. He said, we don't have the... It, it's elite, I can't legally do it. I mean, he wasn't being difficult. He couldn't legally do it because he didn't have enough intelligence to suggest that it's going to be enough of a threat. Which is very interesting, isn't it? So the head of the police has looked at the laws, the law surrounding this. So he's mm. checked... So the head of the police is checked. So the head of the, the police are there to ensure that the law is observed. Right. Now, look, don't get us wrong. We've been in, the, the police get a whole host of shit wrong. Don't get me wrong. You no, know, but, but you know what? And on that, Mark Rowley has been brought in because of the, you know, the mess. horrors of the Metropolitan Police. Mm. And he's, I've listened to him quite a few times mm. and he seems like a very strict, he seems like, he seems like the sort of person that wants things done, the, uh, mm. the, the T's crossed and the I's dotted yeah, sort of person, yeah. which probably we do really, really need with the Metropolitan mm. Police. Somebody where there is no grey area, mm. where there's really fixed boundaries on behaviour, and he's mm. coming down very tough on any complaints about mm. individual police. He wants to go black, perfect uniforms, shaved head, mm. you know, short back and sides, all of Absolutely. that sort of stuff. Trying to bring the Metropolitan Police back into line. Because... Let's admit it, it's in a, it's in a terrible state, PR-wise, isn't it? The police. It? The police. Yeah, absolutely. And, and very much in the Met, Met. And Natasha Milton, don't worry at all. I really hope you don't fall out over this, guys. I hope you can understand how hard it can be for a new Israeli. Absolutely. Of course, 100%. 100%. Of course. And we're going we're gonna to get to that, because this, what's happening with Braverman, has huge ramifications, not just for people on the Palestinian march, of whom huge numbers are Jewish, too. Um, but it has huge implications, I think, for... Uh, and this is, the, this is what's so awful about what I think is happening here, uh, is that this is, this is going to prove dangerous for Jewish and Muslim, or not Muslim, but people of Israeli-Jewish connection, heritage, or people of Arabic heritage, and not even necessarily Muslim. I can also say, Muslim. also for the police... Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't want to be a policeman on Saturday, would well, you? Well, let's clarify what's been said. So, so, so Rishi, Rishi so we're going to get to that in a second. Absolutely, totally, totally understand. And I think this is a huge cause for concern for everyone. So, Suella Bravman pushes back. Uh, Rishi, in a sort of, I'm the headmaster with short trousers on, come to my office, Mark Rowley, he says. So, Rowley. that was reported like Mark Rowley was summoned. summoned. Now, why was that? why was that word used? Because the press want us to think that he's not doing the right thing. Right. But would he have summoned him or would he have said, can we have a bit of a chat about this? I think the feeling and the... I think he may have been. He may have been. He may have been. We, we will never know, will we? I mean, how was the letter written? Get yourself here now. <laughs> Get yourself here for 10 o'clock. Or would you mind having a chat? The interesting thing about this, and this is really interesting, that before we get to Suella Bravman, who basically, what is this new... And again, for people who don't who know who Suella is, she's our Home Secretary. She's responsible for security in the country, at home, keeping all communities safe, making sure that we all kind of move smoothly. Didn't and in she a way get sacked at one point because she, she 
accidentally gave out some very sensitive something or other. Yeah, she, she's, she's done a lot of naughty things. <laughs> she I mean, was she's a naughty girl. Once as the home mom. She's a naughty girl. <laughs> she's a She's been a very naughty girl. So anyway, but naughty girl and her sort of slightly ineffective mate, Rishi, um, they, they summons him, so he comes on. But the interesting thing about this is, so obviously Mont Rowley went in, said to, said to old Rishi, look, mate, pull your trousers up. Oh, sorry, they're already pulled up. He said, look, look, Rishi, I, it's looking okay, mate. Honestly, it's looking okay. And I promise you, there's always, and this was a really important point. It's like he said about football matches, football hooliganism. He said, there's always elements. He said, that's what the police are there for. The mm. police are there to manage the extremities on the edges and so maintain. Peaceful protest so peaceful protests. And can that's move a forward. really important yeah. thing. It's not zero tolerance, can't be anything. Otherwise, we live because in. Because that's the way a dictatorship yeah. would, stop, would stop any marches, wouldn't they? Because they said if there is anything that steps out of line, then you can't have a march. And that's, that's, it's so important to be able to have people. Freedom, freedom totally. of speech. Yeah. And, it, and I think it's a really important detail that Mark Rowley said as he was eyeing up Rishi's socks, because you can't not look at them when he's wearing his trousers and he's got his legs crossed, because the trousers roll up even further. He said, look, mate, uh, we're there for those little bits and we're not worried. There aren't really that many little bits, because there haven't been any. These have been some of the most peaceful protests we've ever, ever encountered. He basically said, I can't, if I stop the march, I'll be breaking the law. Yeah. Is and that that's right? what he said. Is that right? Yes, yeah. and, and the reason he clearly went in and said that was straight after he left his office. Now, so no sooner had top, number 10 Downing Street's door shut, the cat looked up and went, what did you think of his trousers, to Rowley? He literally, Rishi Sunak, issued a statement saying, in full support of him. Saying, saying oh, he's, he's reassured basically, me. Basically, we've had the chat and he's reassured me. Yes, I still think it's personally... Rishi finds it disrespectful to have a peace march on Armistice Day. Yeah. That's what he said. But Mark Rowley has reassured me that this pr protest should go ahead. And to be fair to Rishi, he issued a statement to those work to, to yeah. that effect, saying, "Okay, look, I'm, I don't agree with it. I don't, I don't like it. For me, it's not nice. And for uh, you know, and this is where I totally understand and respect for Natasha Milchin and for numerous other people that it, there's a feeling that it's it's not you know in feeling threatened. They feel feeling threatened. Threat, absolutely." It. Um, but with all the best assurances in place, Rishi then came out and said, OK, but he's assured me, he's assured me. Now, I'll tell you one thing, though. What do you not want as the commissioner of the Metropolitan Police when you've gone in to see the prime minister, you've reassured him that there's absolutely no intelligence whatsoever to suggest that something's going to kick off in a big way? You give him the guarantee that if it does in any way, we'll keep monitoring it, that we'll draw your attention to it. and we Because what has to happen is he has to apply for a ban. So he would have to approach the Prime Minister and uh, the Home Secretary to ban it, if, if that's the case. And what was happening yesterday was it was beginning to feel like, quite apparently, that Suella Bravman, or at that time, and Rishi Sunak, were putting pressure on him to ban it anyway. So they were, in a sense, putting pressure on him to act illegally. There's no, there's no, two ways, there's no, no other way of, of sort of... Well, many people have said that. Skinning huh? it. Yeah. So what do you not want if you've gone in, reassured the, the Prime Minister and you come out, what do you not want? Well, let's have a th let's think, what might you not want to happen? This is like one of those questions in class. Anyone in class? What would you not want to happen at the very point that you've gone in as the, as the man responsible for saying that this protest... You wouldn't then want your, your, your home office... What would you, yeah. Um, then putting out, an, well... <laughs> Putting out again another attack on your chief of police's decision and your prime minister. I mean, that's that. That's what's happened. Rishi and Mark Rowley have come to the conclusion that everything's fine. That's gone out. So that like puts a little, you know, puts a little dampener on on sort of on that sort of febrile feeling that was that was bubbling away. And then Suella Braverman does an interview. With the, was it the Telegraph? It, well, she, no, it was the Times. She wrote it in the Times, which she didn't. It's just, been, released, it's just been revealed. She didn't run it past uh, well, the didn't. government. She didn't run it past the cabinet. Oh, so, well, that was minute. my first thing. I, I Collective responsibility, which we've all been told, if you don't observe, you are somehow a hater, has been totally removed. So she's gone wow. on her own course, ignored the edits that were requested oh, and published right. a piece, okay. essentially saying that the police are going soft on lefties, um, I, you know, the one thing I don't feel in, in tandem with is the, the police politics. I to call, we are in a situation where we're calling the police lefties. Well, uh, the Home Secretary is. Yeah, no, no, no. But I mean, 
Well, that's really interesting, because that, that was the first thing I said to you, wasn't it? How weird. So what time did she do this? Had she done this interview before Rishi had interview. spoken she to Mark? She wrote a piece. Sorry, wrote, sorry, yeah, wrote yeah, a piece. Sorry. Was, this, was this before uh, Rishi, and so it was already printed, and it all run away with her, or was this something that then Rishi can do? So now there's just been a... Is that, has that just been an announcement? It's just been announced, yeah. No, so it's been just revealed. been announced. So this morning, the talk was... Because what she's doing seems so, like, rogue, you know, that the suggestion this morning from various different programmes and presenters is that she is trying to get, get sacked so that she can then splinter off and then come back as Prime Minister. I don't really care what she's aiming to see. I know the whole sacked thing people want to go... That bit doesn't worry me because regardless of what happens, it's her opinions that are gaining traction and it's the division that she's sowing that is succeeding. So she's characterised essentially him as going soft and allowing left-wing protests to happen. She actually argues that football fans and hooligans aren't held to the same standard. We know who that's appealing but to. I just, but, but aside from anything else, I think this, aside from what anybody thinks about this much... I feel she's put the police in danger totally. with this. Totally. Because the police are already totally. in, a, in a really like risky position, aren't they? Because people have lost respect. How many people do you talk to and say, well, God, you should tell them. Well, what's the point of telling the police? Everyone says, what's the point of telling the police? Nothing will get done by the police. And so there's a lot of like mistrust and anger from a lot of people towards the police. And, and she's the Home Secretary and she's, she's, she's egging that on, having... Have, they have only just... I mean, how long's Mark Rowley been in the job? Only a year, is it? Absolutely. He's, he's there to sort it out. She's... I heard there's a really good interview with someone, I think, I can't remember who it was. Someone Sorry said she doesn't this. solve things or create things, she destroys things. She's only she she interested in bias. sowing divide and mm. sowing discontent and causing conflict. That's all she's interested in, nothing else. But I just want to quickly read Bev Berry. I've just seen your comment go up. And I hate to say it, Bev, but, you know... I worry that in saying this, you, you perhaps have fallen foul of the propaganda that people like Suella Bravman are promoting. It doesn't help when you have our cenotaphs being targeted by these protests and a poppy set. Now, the poppy seller getting hassled, absolutely reprehensible and not right. Totally, totally agree. That's mm. not right. None of the march is targeting the cenotaph. This is a narrative. This is a fake narrative. And this is what Mark Riley no one said. Is going Mark near the Riley cenotaph. said that Suella Bravman was told weeks ago that it wasn't going to be at the Cenotaph and that it was going to be after the silence and it was going to be starting in a completely different part of London. So he... I, I thought it was amazing that he said that. that yeah. he, because that made it really, really clear for us mm. that she basically... It feels like she she sold us a pup, really, with that because she, she knew that it wasn't going to happen at the Cenotaph. Can I just say something? We're in a really odd situation here. Really odd situation culturally, which is really worrying, where if someone in a qualified, publicly appointed position says something that you happen to not agree with, you, 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 you just disagree with it, rather than observing the letter of the law. I hate to say it, in the same way that on October the 7th, Hamas ignored international law, since October the 7th, Israel has ignored international law, we literally have a Home Secretary doing a, trying to encourage exactly the same thing. The, the, the stochastic terrorism is what um, James O'Brien has a phrase, which is this is kind of, what he it's like throwing to... red meat at it's saying something, maligning a section of people, not calling to arms or anything, that generates the momentum of hostility. She, this is so inflammable that mm -hmm. what she's done, the only guarantee of violence and that's not to say there wouldn't be little moments. Don't, don't, let's not get confused and drawn down. As we discovered the other day, there was more violence in Edinburgh at a bonfire night than there was at any of the Palestinian marches. The only source of violence that is now going to come, which the right-wing press and Suella and everyone else is going to say, it's because of the... If there wasn't a Palestinian peace, peace march, there wouldn't be the violence. That's the narrative that's coming our way. But what, rest assured there will be violence and it will not be coming... No, there could be a chance well, of violence. We don't know there will What be. she's doing is making that possibility infinitely She's fanning the flames. And, and this is what is being spoken about everywhere, isn't it? Every, every, every radio show you listen to today, there's... Is it, is it uh, Ed Davies come out today and saying she should be sacked? Yvette, Ron, Yvette, Yvette, Yvette Cooper, Cooper has been incredibly Yvette Cooper vocal. has said, you know, that, that this is just utterly shocking. She said, you know, no Home Secretary would ever talk in these terms because 
you're you're fanning flames. What you want to do as Home Secretary is 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 dampen them. Mm. And I feel sorry for everybody. You know, like you know, Natasha Milchan, as you were saying, this is scary. As as a Jew, as a, as a as as anybody who, which is everybody that could be involved in this in whatever way, it makes it scary for everyone. Mm. Whether you're a policeman, whether you are a, a Jewish supporter or a non-supporter Jewish, or whether you are Muslim or whether you are Christian, wherever you are in this, I believe she has made this a tinderbox that it didn't need to be. And I think that that's really, really sad because one of the things that we can be so proud and so glad of living in this country is that we are a country where we are entitled to march in protest. Which is why I also think that the Armistice Day, which Winston Churchill's grandson himself said, you can't get more British through and through. If you want to do the stick of rock and British blood runs through you, Winston Churchill's grandson is, is a classic case in point. You know, he made it the point that Armistice, everything that everyone fought for in these various conflicts that, that have, you know, our, um, our soldiers and armed forces have fallen for was the right to be able to peacefully protest and it's peace peace peaceful protest now one of the things one of the things that i i did want to say was sola bravman has likened it all to the irish problem and the irish issue at the ira when there were the conflicts and uh, you know not to say that there aren't still conflicts but you know she's been likening it to the to, to the ira you know problem in northern ireland um, and I think it's just really telling that she's pulling upon an example like that, another sort of terrorist example, um, without even, you know, checking with. And apparently there's huge upset in Northern Ireland with the way in which she's invoked the Irish problem as some kind of way to kind of mobilise support and an anti-March sense she of She knows things. no bounds. It, it's frightening. You know, a former... I just wanted to read uh, this. A also former... to call people hate marchers. That means everybody that's marching is marching for hate. That's quite something. <laughs> so many people lap that up. That's the problem. Yeah. So many people... Um, a true. former Metropolitan Police Superintendent said to Nick Ferrari and LBC Today, I've never known a situation like this where someone in the state of off... Great state of office for Home Secretary is having a very open disagreement with the Commissioner of the Met around an operational matter. This is an operational policing matter. The police have the intelligence. They'll have the understanding of what is an effective strategy. As soon as you get to a position where a Home Secretary is trying to effect that, you have essentially an, an authoritarian state. You can't, you, she's crossed a boundary, you can't, which is why Ed Davies of the Lib Dems has called for her to be fired. Yvette Cooper says she's lost control. I mean, lost control, this is strong language. But I think clamouring for her to be sacked or fired is kind of almost irrelevant because she's done the damage. Whatever she has hoped to achieve from this, she's kind of done her bit. And so whatever happens this weekend, it's going to be fascinating. Fascinating to see how the press covers this weekend. I'm, I'm absolutely fascinated to see how the press covers this. Oh, yeah, what no, do you think, then, guys? Uh, can I just say quickly, just for Nat Natasha Milton, I just want to share this thought because this is something that I think has got lost in all of this. Anti-Semitism... Um, operates in many different ways and in many different cultures. Um, totally reprehensible and absolutely abhorrent is the suggestion that Israel shouldn't exist by Hamas. You know, they don't, they're not interested in a two-state solution. Um, that doesn't mean everyone in Palestine isn't interested in a two-state solution. That's anti-Semitic. The attacks, anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic chants, anti-Semitism could exist everywhere uh, and does and is there, as does Islamophobia. It's, it does, and it's there. The weirdest thing about what Suella Bravman has done here is potentially mobilising groups of British society, whatever that means, who are, I would argue, probably don't even know what they're going to be there fighting against, because they think the Cenotaph is under attack, but the Cenotaph isn't anywhere near anything. But it could be, you know, a problem if people are going to protect the Cenotaph, go, where is everyone, and go searching for them. What I'm trying to say here is, these people who are coming out to sort of protect Britain from the peace march are probably anti-Semitic and Islamophobic. Mm. So this doesn't work for anyone. This doesn't work for anyone. And it, that's the most frightening part of this, because, of course, anti-Semitism and Islamophobia is going up because of, you know, the extremism of what happened on October the 7th and also because of the extremism that's being felt is happening from Israel since. So, of course, if you are inclined towards those terrible, terrible impulses, 
people are being nudged there further. And so the weirdest thing about this is she's appealing to, directly, a, a sort of part, a section of society that has no interest in either community. Just it's appealing no to No interest in either community. You know, that's what, that's all that it's doing. And it's just, it just makes me so sad. It's just, it just doesn't need to be like it's this. It's frightening, Natasha. It and really Natasha, doesn't. I really want to say something as well. What I'm hearing so much when you hear, you know, on the radio, so many uh, Jewish members of community, of, of, of this country, uh, and, and Muslim and non-Muslim, just, you know, Arab people, uh, you know, uh, of this country, there are such similarities between what you're both going, you know, both cultures are going through, the mm. feelings, the fears, the sense of loss, the sense of profound hurt, I'm feeling it in Nadia and her family, of when you say your people, to say your people isn't to say uh, despite everyone else, not at all, but you're mm. feeling it because at that point, both sides have been under attack yeah. and are under attack. So, you know, this is where I genuinely agree with Naomi Alderman, Jewish writer who... I really like, who wrote The Power, and she's got a new book out, and she said, it is incumbent on all of the countries of the West to help both countries to come help to solution. Defuse, to help defuse, to help defuse, that's Absolutely. what we want. And the reason I've I mean, been being very strong in my language about Biden and everything is that I don't think sending billions of dollars of weaponry and missiles and all this kind of stuff is, sends out the right signal. I just don't, sorry. You know, it's not, it's not about taking a side, it's about an ever-shifting and changing kind of scenario and situation where the news flow is different. You know, when one says that October the, October the 7th happened on October the 7th, the hostage crisis coming out of that is still there, obviously. But there's huge dispute, okay. Natasha, as I'm sure you agree, in Israel about the strategy of getting the hostages out. So, you know... Well, um, it's like we've said on here many times, isn't it? Imagine being the family of those hostages and just seeing what's happening on a daily basis. Mm. It's absolutely horrific for them. And I do think, actually, I, I, I go so far as to say, I think it's absolutely abhorrent the, the extent to which principally Britain and America have just not in any way engaged in any Does complicated it? diplomacy whatsoever. I mean, whatsoever. There haven't been... There's well, been no I mean, nuance. there will be some going on behind the scenes, but the thing is, they don't seem to have any feeling or need to, to share any of that. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> and that's why it just keeps, like, it just, yeah... So I think yeah. Suella Bravman, and a lot of people are saying I, Suella is expressing, is saying the unsayable. She's saying what so many people don't feel they can say. You can, I, I want to say something on that as well, which I find it's a really interesting thing to say. Just because it's unsayable, it might be unsayable because it should be unsayable. I, th I think to throw your uh, <laughs> chief of police, we don't call it chief of police here, what do we call it? Well, he's, he's, the, commissioner, police, he's the commissioner. To throw him under the bus. Let's just stick with that. <laughs> Is that right for the Home Secretary to throw the poor guy under the bus? I mean, I'm amazed at the police. And put, don't and put feel. the police in mm -hmm. danger. I mean, surely, because you've got to. The Home Secretary, obviously, there's always a bit of wrangling, isn't there, between Home Secretary and the police? So, but, but, but you've not got over to, operational. No, but, but exactly, but not over not over these situ like direct situations like this. Yeah. It's, it, it is unprecedented, isn't it? And where there's no con there's no conflict in that because what, 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 the reason I stress operational matters, you have to observe the letter of the law. I mean, what I have to say though, one of the things that this is the most frightening and most demoralising part of all of this is it seems like the letter of the law is just something to be ignored internationally as well as domestically. I mean, the point he's trying to make is, appetite-wise, and this is why I hear what you're saying, appetite-wise, if you feel it's the wrong day for this, I, I can kind of understand that. I think we talked about it a couple of days mm. ago. It's unfortunate timing that these regular marches have been scheduled. There are arguments to say, is it the right day? I think there are some, Winston Churchill's grandson being one of them, myself too, that feel there's a real connection, actually, between what armistice has always meant to me, my grandmother, my grandfather who fought in the war, who fought for the right and the freedom to be able to protest peacefully, um, and sometimes angrily, but not violently. You know, it's all made to feel... In your family, you have very strong connections to the forces. Incredibly, they, they, they were my in the grand, RAF and everything. My, my grandfather was, yeah, in the RAF all the way through the war. When and I mentioned Dresden once to my grandfather, the, the darkest shadow came over his, his, his face. And I remember thinking when, when Nick Ferrara was just trotting it around, saying, well, that was a kind of collateral damage that we had to tolerate. Even, even veterans of that. So, you know, I think there's huge sensitive crossover between what and I think everybody has to is. understand and sympathize with everybody's feelings like somebody yeah. that feels that it's wrong yeah. my heart goes out to them somebody that yeah. doesn't and feels that the, a march is really put my heart goes out to them and if we could just do more mm. of that just stepping into 
other people's shoes just for a minute and looking at it from those different point of points of view, mm. what a safer world it would be. And, mm. and I feel that Suella today and yesterday and over the last few days has done nothing to aid that. Mm. Totally agree. And that is the way to keep a society safer. Absolutely, absolutely. And so to all of our Israeli, Jewish and Arab Muslim, not non-Muslim Arabs um, who, who are watching Natasha, you know, Absolute. I think we have to now, and I mean, I have said as well that we get we have to get to a point now where there and there is talk of pauses, days. We have to get to a point now where we talk about what the solution, what the long term solution is here, because mm. this can't. You mean you know what? what, what you know, we're day thirty one, thirty two now. Is there has to come a point, and I know that for so many um, Israeli families who whose family members are hostages, there's a lot of upset. You know, we're not hearing that. We're not hearing that. We're not hearing that. There's actually a lot of frustration in Israel too. Um, which, interestingly, when that's present, when you hear that frustration, it really helps to kind of humanise the Israeli government policy because you start to think, oh, God, yeah, of course, Israel. you know, every state, you can be critical of a state's actions. Yeah. Of course you can. We all are, all the time. We but don't like America the people. doing this. Let's yeah. not just, yeah, yeah. let's yeah. not just blanket accuse people, a whole nation. You know, there are, I mean, just look at what's going on in this country, like tomorrow. Mm. If we could just respect each other's feelings, emotions and strong beliefs. Mm. It, it, it's so simple and yet it seems to be the most complicated thing for there humanity. You there you go. Um, okay, well, let's let's just quickly move on to Doctor Who actor John Barrowman has raised a topic that's very close to my heart. And it's about the self-checkout till. And this is really important. Years ago, I pitched to the head of Channel 5 and he was really toying with it. Something which was going to be, what do you think of this as an idea? It was going to be, I pitched it as it's the goggle box of the supermarket till. The idea being is you have, you know how you have your regulars on the sofa and goggle box. But this is you have your regulars who are till men and women serving members of the public. And they're the characters, they're the ones you meet. But you have a passing cast of all the people who pass through. And, and, and I think there would be something really nice. Anyway. So this is John Barrowman talking about how it's a sort of soulless and sad and frustrating and disappointing and depressing detail that more and more supermarkets are going for total, total self-service. I mean, I've been in a few now. There are no, or there's only one till that you can put your stuff on the conveyor belt. And I was just thinking it was really important for my nan, her connection with the person at Sainsbury's, where mm, she used to go to the it was supermarket. Everything. It was everything. I mean, going to Sainsbury's, getting on the bus with everyone, talking to everyone, going, I mean, that was like, yeah. honestly, that was uh, the highlight of her week, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What do you think, guys? Is, is, is the supermarket till a moment I mean, for our you? Our local Sainsbury's... Mm. Um, really sad for is, elderly people. It's nearly groups. entirely self checkout now. Have you seen that? Well, no, I walked in recently and it's all completely changed. They've got about 30 of them mm. with two, two lines. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily speed things up either. Every two no. seconds you're having to call somebody over. Who has the thing where you, okay, let's talk about this for a frustration. So, so I miss that. I, you know, every now and then when I see, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are some till people that I see and I think, I don't know if I want to be served by you today because you, you were a bit moody last time or a bit angry. And then there are others who I see and I think, oh yeah, I really want to, and you can see that they're doing something and the look on their face when you're really nice to them and you're kind to them and, and it just transforms the sort of experience. Mm. But, but the frustration of the self-till is, do you do the thing where you get, Nadia is a nightmare at them. It's like literally you pick them up, you scan them and then you don't put it on the thing. I do everything wrong. I balance, I put something too light, I balance it wrongly. I buy alcohol, which means you need to call somebody over. Paracetamol. I, I, I accidentally pick up two packets of paracetamol, which means I have to call somebody over. I'm constantly calling, so I think I've got enough bags and I haven't, so I need them enough to call them over. Yeah, or you scan something that's like a, I don't know, packet of chicken flavoured crisps and it doesn't pick up the weight. Yeah, because oh. you have to balance it oh, just you right. Have to put it in and if it leans against the side, it doesn't pick it up. It's a bloody nightmare. So um, annoying. Say hello to them. They wear the name badges for a reason, says Faith Goodman. Good exactly. Point. And let's not forget, in the pandemic, the people that worked in supermarkets were absolute heroes, weren't they? Absolutely. They were getting all sorts going on. They were also very scared. When you think about the height of it, the fear that we had of passing anybody, people were going to supermarkets and staying there a couple of hours because they were so desperate to get out and have something to do. Yeah. So supermarket workers were really front line, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, like yeah. bus drivers and all of that. Let me... And to just like, just 
just keep chipping away at all of the jobs. It's Absolutely. just sad. Look, three really interesting comments here, one, off, one after the other. B, I just about got used to self-service until they introduced the iPad cameras so you can see yourself at oh, the worst horrible. angle. It's not nice, is it? Uh, Bell X1, I was at the airport and the shop was totally checkout and I had to help the elderly lady in front of me. She didn't know what to do. Oh. Steph, when boys were young and living in Scotland, away from family, I was so alone sometimes. A till operator would be the only chat until my hubby came home. That was so sad. Do you remember in Harrods last year? Yes. We were filming it didn't in work. Harrods. No, it was in Harrods, Vlogmas, the Vlogmas. It? And um, it was really, really busy. We were in the food hall. We bought all this food, didn't we? Mm. And then we were like right over the other side. They had one of these video things. Go and check iPads. it out. Harrods. I was right over the other side. You know, me and my sister. And suddenly. Croydon girls. And it was about 50, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after we'd finished paying. And this guy came over all serious. He goes, um, I'm sorry, but I believe that you didn't pay for something, something. I was like, where? Didn't know what he was bloody talking about. Anyway, it was the till. Mm, it didn't work properly. So, no, but he had, he had Oh, the seen... camera, yes. Yes, you're no, right. But it, it, all of that's fine. And in the end, of course, it was yeah. fine and they could see that. But the fact that in these packed Harrods, 10 minutes after the sale, they came and found us exactly where we are and said, boy, back. I mean, it was all right in there, but God, it was so embarrassing. It looked like we tried to nick stuff. Yeah, he, as he walked past me, he said, they they, he said are they from Croydon? They uh, must be recording it then. Yeah, they must they have do. played it back and yeah. got, I just don't know how it will work. Well, in Aaron's, I bet they got the time. Christopher Cundall, I hope you're well, matey. He has been so generous and so many of you will now be members courtesy of Christopher Cundall. Absolutely Thank you, Christopher yeah. Cundall. That's so, wanted... so sweet of you. Big uh, heart. And being in a wheelchair, I want to read your, your detail here. Being in a wheelchair is often a nightmare and I have to check before if they have only have self-service open as it's too hard for me and then have to go to another store. That is, I mean, that in itself. There you go, there you go. Oh my God, and now Thanks we have Sophie this. Morgan on Loose Women. We just like, oh my God, I just can't believe, because I just never think about it, do you? If no. you're able-bodied, you just don't Terrible. consider no. all the irritations mm, that can literally limit your life to such a degree that you that you would be irritating for us, but completely limits. Yeah, it's fascinating. Thank you, Christopher. We all need to be way more aware. We were going to talk about adverts, but hey, why talk about adverts when in we a did. minute we can do minute. oh we can do the John Lewis advert in a minute. I've got to scoot off. I've got to scoot off. I've got to scoot off immediately. So guys, the John Lewis, our reaction to John Lewis is going to be landing very soon. soon and have a 